Well, when it comes to the seventh episode of Marvel's What If, there certainly is a lot of interesting twists, turns, and development on the familiar, yet they put a lot of interesting spin on the rest of the universe, which again brings into question how does just one small deviation affect everything in such a huge way, specifically one that deals with Thor and Loki, but overall, it was definitely full of new directions and interesting takes on these characters and particularly this take on Thor. So as we find out in this episode, things right off the bat are very different just due to this one little thing, aka decision that Odin made, which of course was to leave Loki behind and give him back to the ice giants, which makes Thor a only child no we are not dealing with hella in this one so let's not talk about that yet if they ever get back to this which i think they will there's a lot more to explore but essentially thor is on his own and he's grown quite differently without loki there to be mischievous so what exactly does he do well as soon as odin goes into the odin sleep he decides to go to earth and throw a giant party literally across the entire planet we see Jane as she was studying with Darcy. Well, they don't really make the same type of first contact considering that the entire Earth just accepts party Thor and, well, they start to party. Now, there is a contingency plan here that is going to show up to try to foil their plans. So, Captain Marvel haters, well, this episode's for you because this episode is anti-Captain Marvel because she is the, and I quote, party pooper. Unquote. As these Asgardians have done a lot of damage and S.H.I.E.L.D. called her up and they're looking for her to help. Well, the two do have a battle and by the end of the episode, everything more or less works out in favor of getting Thor out of here. Considering that we have Jane who goes after Frigga and gets her help being like, look, your your son, he's he's wild. Things are happening. Things have gone bad on this planet. Um need your help and during the course we see that earth was uh well literally covered in a giant party in every corner of it so everything's been kind of damaged or destroyed or um graffitied if you will and this could have caused a lot of damage specifically frigga didn't show up in time because captain marvel was about to go literally nuclear and just completely decimate like half the planet if need be to stop this because of how much damage it was doing so yeah, um, overall this episode, a lot of interesting takes on characters. Uh, one of the things that also happens to be brought up in this is like the Star Wars thing. How does just one thing affect everybody in such a significant way? Like, we still see Drax and everything up there in space seemed to have went okay with him. Like, the Guardians still formed, but no Star Lord from what I noticed. But again, there's a lot of Easter eggs and things in this episode that are just kind of quick. Overall... It was really interesting to see and all the twists and turns they take on the mythos that we knew I thought were great and I hope they expand upon some of these further because there's a lot in this that was just interesting from a standpoint of how did that get there. And as always if you guys would like our full take on this episode as we discuss it as we watch it with you guys that will be out soon with the audio commentary tier along of course with more discussions and everything we drop throughout the week so 